Mama, there go that man again. Yes, here comes the mannequin. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, we are going to show some of you because some of you have a really difficult time in understanding motions and how to create motions and how to use the chat GPTs effectively. Like I said, they train it to lie. Give me one second. Let me cut this off so that we can no longer train it to lie. It's still listening, but it won't be listening as much. This is the statement I put in. The defendant's failure to recognize the promissory note as collateral security as recognized by the Federal Reserve Act and put the sections here in the National Emergency Act, blah, 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 constitutes a violation of federal law and is fraud. So I went back and I added some more stuff. Y'all just need to follow me. Just, just pay attention. I went back and I added promissory note versus a draft. Definition of a promissory note, how it can include an order, but it's still an instrument. And an instrument that contains an order is called a draft. And a draft is not evidence of an outstanding debt. And the FDIC is insuring these accounts because this is against the FDIC. You guys will be allowed to join this suit as well. Now must allow their claims by these individuals to be had to compensate them for unlawfully being accused unlawfully of failing to pay and losing their properties. Okay. Promissory note versus draft. This case right here. Now, I didn't give it the previous case it gave me. It gave me a bunch of cases yesterday. I didn't give them none of that. The court held that an instrument cannot be simultaneously classified as both a draft and a promissory note. If an instrument contains an order to pay, it cannot be considered a promissory note. Relevant, this case supports the argument that an instrument with an order to pay are drafts and not promissory notes, aligning with UCC, blah, 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 blah. This case, the same thing. So it gives me the case, then I asked it for an explanation. Now let me explain what's going on here. Most of you are using the chat GTP models wrong. And when you're, especially when you're looking at cases in case law. So I'm gonna help you all out. I am putting together a motion. In the motion, it will provide the answer in the context that most fav that is most favorable in this instance to the claimant or the petitioner and least favorable to the defendant is that understood i will provide the information in a moment as soon as you confirm you understand these instructions and will not deviate and or add nuances and or add what you think but provide answers specifically and within the context of the question being asked. So, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing you do is you tell it you want it to create an outline. Now watch this. Hold on. Give me a second. We go, let's do this. We're gonna do this right here. We're gonna paste that right there. See that right there? And then we're gonna take this right here, right here, right here. And we're gonna copy that. And we're gonna come right here. No, right here. And we're gonna Paste that. Then we're going to do shift and enter at the same time in order to put the spaces between. Shift and enter at the same time. That will get you your paragraphs in here so it doesn't just hit enter. Then we're going to select, right click, and hold down on the mouse and select all, copy. Now, normally it's control C, but sometimes it doesn't do it. Sometimes it plays games, so you're going to hit copy. Now, I'm going to delete all that because I don't need all that for this window. Now, we're going to open up a new window just for y'all. Just for them? Just for y'all. Now, watch what we do here. I want y'all to pay attention. I'm pasting this. Now, I don't want the whole thing because I don't want it to start. I need it to do something before it does this. Hold on now. Uh-oh. Keep going. Keep on moving. Don't stop the other time. Oh, I'm sorry. Why do people choose to live their lives this way? Keep on moving. Don't stop now. That's what's in my head right now, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, you see it says it understood. Now watch this. The first thing I need you to do is to create... For instance, a response 
to a foreclosure filing by an opposing party, comma, it will have a table of contents, comma, a caption, comma, and you will make this one universal so it applies to both state and district courts, comma, you will include table of authorities, comma, you will substitute conclusion with summarization, summarization, comma, you will replace argue and argument with present and presentment, comma, you will replace submit and submitted with presented and submit. and presented. Comma. You will not do a prayer for relief. You will simply state affirmative relief requested. Comma. There will be a body. Comma. Statement of claims. Comma. Certification, comma, verification and validation statement, identifying that the information is placed in affidavit format and is true and wholly accurate based on firsthand knowledge and or information. And a copy of the information has been mailed to all parties and has been witnessed by and before God under penalty comma, you will never mention penalty of perjury. You will just simply say under penalty and add today's date and provide me that outline, exclamation mark. You will also incorporate the following into the motion. Comma, but you will always refer to the motion as a petition. Comma, is this understood? Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to supply this to you all for creating a motion. You will do it for every single one. Okay, now you see where he says table of authorities and he puts jurisdiction. Now, I do like that he put the law governing promissory notes. Okay, because there are two different types of promissory notes, but I asked it to do it universally. So this motion you can prepare for either federal or district court. Okay, and he gives historical background, affirmative relief. Now, hold on. Watch this. See this right here? Wake up. I need you to provide three case citations and a brief lecture. A brief explanation for each of the following and incorporate it into the petition. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how you finish your petition. You see how I just asked it to create three citations and then explain how these citations apply. But I already told them it has to be most favorable to the person petitioning. So most favorable to you. Excuse me, give me one second. Okay, I had to step away for just a second. Let's see if it, ooh, look at them table of authorities, y'all. That's a whole lot of tabling. Ooh wee, just, oh, look at that. They they gonna give me the explanations, and then he gonna do the motion. Okay, and look at all of that. Oh, it just an oh like oh. Okay, now it wants me to continue. Let's see if it's gonna continue the right way, because sometimes he starts all over at the beginning. That's a glitch. I know they know about it, and they'll correct it. But here's your motion. 
in response to whatever. This is how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to stress and worry. Why? Because let's say, wait, 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 hold on now. Let's say the case citations are wrong. Let's say all of the case citations are wrong, every single one of them. Well, we're not concerned about the stupid case citations. We're concerned about the principle that's being addressed. F the case citations. Forget people. Forget the stupid case citations. You can watch this. Now, this is only a sample. Wake up. Wake up. I want you to redo this petition. Comma, I want you to get rid of every single case citation. And I only want you to incorporate the principle of law associated with the case. Comma, keeping the very same opinion explanation as to how the courts have ruled on the matter without listing the co case citation, exclamation mark. I also want you to incorporate, comma, restatement of contract, numeral two and numeral three, as it applies to these principles. Is this understood? Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, I promise you, nobody has ever told you you could do it this way. But you don't need stupid case citations. F the stupid case citations. What you will do is you will simply use principles of law. You don't have to know principles of law. He's going to put the principles of law for you. You've already told him to do it that where it's most favorable to you. Now, he's going to finish, okay? And, and he's going to complete everything, and he putting the, the statute at large, because we gave him the statute at large in the Act of Congress. Now, watch this. Watch what I do now. Pay attention. Wake up. Wake up. That was not professional enough, comma, and I told you, you have to make it to where it's most favorable to me, the petitioner, comma, the claimant, comma, and least favorable, comma, to the defendant, i.e., colon, the respondent, comma, you're not following instructions as given, comma, and I told you, no nuances, comma, so I want more professionalism, is that understood? Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, when you click on the link that's attached to the title, all you have to do is copy and paste it into a browser. The link is in the title of this video. When you click on that link, all you have to do is continue this conversation. You don't have to reprogram it. You don't have to give it no more prompts. It's already done for you. I'm trying to tell y'all that's what I'm doing for you. I'm cutting out all of the middleman, all of the work. You don't have to do nothing. Okay, now watch this. Wake up. Wake up. According to the general rules of the court, did you include everything that's necessary, including, comma, challenging the jurisdiction of the opposing party standing, comma, because a party standing is a jurisdictional matter, comma, because without Proof of standing, comma, the court has no jurisdiction over the matter, comma, that is personum jurisdiction, period. Have you challenged all three jurisdictions, comma, personum, comma, in rem, comma, and subject matter? I know that there are several other jurisdictions, but these are the main ones, period. So because this is a challenge to a claim that a promissory note, which contains an ambiguous statement to either having it allowed to be transferred to another party for negotiation via endorsement, comma, and or endorsing it with the instructions 
and or order to pay, comma, as being a draft, comma, a financial instrument, comma, but not a promissory note as defined in law, period, that any promissory note that is delivered to a local Federal Reserve agent, i.e., colon, financial institution, comma, is not, comma, a traditional promissory note operating as a promise to pay, comma, but is a security as defined by the Federal Reserve Act, Title Roman numeral 4, Section 401, Subsection numeral 18, open paren numeral 6, close paren, and the Federal Reserve Act, Section 16, subsection, open paren, numeral 2, close paren, comma, open paren, numeral 4, comma, close paren, period. That since the law holds that these items are to be held at par or face value, comma, for the same purposes as Federal Reserve notes as a result of the June 12, 1945 Act, comma, 59 Stat 237, subsection numero 2, and 59 Stat 238, subsection numero 3, comma, that makes this a matter to where jurisdiction must be challenged as a matter of law because any claim of an outstanding debt, comma, there must be proof by the claimant because the burden of proof is on the claimant and not on the respondent, period. I am bringing forth my claim that the bank, who was the claimant in the previous matter, had no standing or no jurisdiction to bring a claim utilizing what was deemed a promissory note, which was in fact, according to the law, a draft and not a promissory note, period. Stop listening. Those of you who've had cases that you've lost because they brought a promissory note and said you owed, you owed, you owed, and you got evicted out of your home, we're going to do a motion for you, for you to go back in the court without having to have any case law. You don't need to know any case law. Now watch this. Wake up. Did I not tell you specifically that you're supposed to add the principles of law to each one of the purported issues? Stop. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm doing right now is to make sure that he puts forth the maxims. Maxims are principles of law. Hold on. Watch this. I love doing this to him. Wake up. Wake up. Principles of law are maxims, comma, and the courts must follow maxims, comma. You will include proof of this within this presentment. Is that understood? Stop listening. Now, I want you all to know. Stop paying these people to create junk for you. Go ahead and do it yourself. You have this. This is your template. All you got to do is follow it. Go back and listen to what I'm instructing it to do and create your own junk. Okay? Look, you pay somebody $5,000, $2,000, $1,000, $100 billion. You pay these people for what? And then they're talking about they could sell your property? Oh, no. So now we got to do an injunction. So watch this. Oh, and injunctions cost less than a filing of a case. Okay. 
And by the way, when you said before God under penalty, you're not saying under penalty of perjury. You're saying under God's penalty. Okay, they can't. There's nothing they can do about that because they cannot challenge your belief in your God and how you will not offend your God. Got that? All right, hold on. Wake up. You know, the bank is getting ready to foreclose on my property. Comma, they're petitioning the court for a sell date because they're utilizing the non-judicial foreclosure act principles to foreclose on my property, period. But as stated, comma, the promissory note under law, when it has an order or is transferred to another person who has the right to endorse it and negotiate the instrument, comma, it is not a promissory note, but a draft, period. So I need to do an injunction prohibiting or preventing the use of the non-judicial foreclosure acts principles for the speedy foreclosure, comma, preventing the sale and demanding the court order a trial before a jury as opposed to summary judgment, comma, because the summary judgment and the non-judicial foreclosure act principles, comma, violate my due process right by denying me the right to a fair trial, comma, an impartial trial, comma, since they're relying on, comma, what is not evidence of a debt, comma, but evidence of a draft. Exclamation mark. And you will incorporate the previous information in this motion. But remember, this particular petition is specific towards getting an injunction and demanding the court order the clerk of the court to permit the filing of a civil complaint substituting the so-called foreclosure action with a litigation as is required in law for every civil matter where the value of the matter is greater than $20 exclamation mark stop listening I tried to be as detailed as possible for you okay those of you who are being foreclosed on and they just want to tell you they're sending you a notice for sale go ahead and do your motion in the court you're gonna be asking for uh, injunction do the rules on injunctions so watch this wake up wake up what are the basic rules in the court for following an injunction to prevent someone from doing something you believe to be unlawful, comma, such as a foreclosure sale? Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, before you file bankruptcies, before you do all that other stuff, do this first. Get your injunction taken care of. I'm putting the basic rules here, but you'll have to read the rules for your court in the state that you're in. Forget all of that stuff. Okay? Now, we're going to do an injunction motion. Okay? And I'm going to have him go ahead and take care of this. Oh, by the way, that's right. I forgot about that. With an injunction, you get yourselves a temporary restraining order because oh he did it <laughs> he did a sample y'all he gave you guys a sample petition for doing an injunction now watch what we gonna do wake up i need you to redo the sample petition comma i need you to stay within the parameters for which i've instructed comma i need you to add the information comma and i need you to explain what's most favorable to this petitioner, comma, in a fashion for where the court will see that they're bringing forth a valid claim and that the likelihood of success based on the information and the principles of law, i.e. colon, maxims presented, clearly establishes that the petitioner has a likelihood of success, exclamation mark. Stop listening. 
ladies and gentlemen, there you have your three motions. Some of you will stress out. <laughs> okay, I, I have no idea. I don't get it. Everything is being done for you. Well, I don't know. I don't know if the, the court going to accept it or not. The courts don't read just stupid motions. Do you guys not get that? The courts don't read it. They ignore it. If you don't believe me, go and take a look at the idiots out there who continue to do all of this paperwork and talk about their paperwork being ignored. The courts will never respond to your junk unless you do junk. They love junk. Okay, they love junk. Okay, so this ain't junk. All right, now watch this. Wake up. Wake up. I need you to surmise each of these petitions. Comma. I need you to explain what each is about and what they are trying to accomplish so that we can assure that it's not gobbledygook, comma, nonsensical, comma, that the language is clear, comma, reasonable and understandable, comma, that it is not frivolous and or meritless, comma, and you will explain it to a 22-year-old e-commerce worker. Stop listening. Stop. Okay, sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm doing is I'm having him surmise your entire complaint. So basically what he's doing by doing it this way, if a judge says that, well, this is bold, and this stuff don't make no sense, then this is what you do. Because he summarizes the whole thing. Ta-da. And you just want the purpose and the goal. Because... He can't say that it was junk. The courts cannot say that they didn't understand because this was done in a way in which a 22-year-old would understand. So look, some of y'all, the only thing you have to do is get in front of your computer, copy this, put it in the Word, reformat it, make it look like a motion, and just add your information into it. Well, the courts had said that I can't use... ChatGPT to create a motion. That's a lie. You tell them that ChatGPT is your paralegal because you cannot afford anything but ChatGPT. It does the research for you and with you. You have a complete history of your research. You can even give them a copy of this video. Of course you can use ChatGPT. This is your paralegal. You feel me? Stop, stop, stop. Let, tell, letting them tell y'all how to run your lives, people. They are not your gods. Of course you can use ChatGPT. That's why we did it without a single use of case citations. This way, pay attention, you don't have to worry about case citations ever again. Go back, listen to this video, listen to what I did, read what I did. Go back over the video, but you're going to have to read these so that you can add your stuff. Your stuff. Okay? And you will have to appeal. They deny you. You appeal and you do the same thing on appeal. Exactly what I did in these several complaints here. Look, less than 30 minutes for complaints. Less than 30 minutes, people. So imagine what you could do if you just sat down and took the time to do one. I hope this is understood. I hope you guys are getting the value of what's being done here. I hope that you will click on the link. I hope that you will copy this. I hope that you will use it. Stop your foreclosures, people. Stop letting them take your properties. A promissory note, if it has an order to pay or if they've transferred it once, all they need to do is transfer it once. Remember, the transfer of your note, if it says in there you agreed, and I promise you if it's a standard contract, you agreed, then it's a draft. It's not a promissory note. I'm sorry. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Whoa, I just came up with something. Watch this. Wake up. Did you know that standard promissory notes, comma, your traditional promissory notes are non-transferable? 
unless it explicitly has language saying that it is transferable? Did you know that this is because a promissory note? If it has language saying it is transferable, so as to be endorsed, comma, it's not a promissory note, but a draft or a financial instrument. Stop listening. I didn't ask it. I'm, I'm going to let it complete it. I didn't ask him this, but watch this. Yes, I understand that the standard traditional promissory note are generally not transferable unless it explicitly includes language stating that it is transferable. If a promissory note contains language that allows it to be endorsed or transferred, it changes its nature and can be classified as a draft or a different type of financial instrument. So watch this. We're going to take what it says right here because it said it. It said it. It said it. It said it. And we're going to go to perplexity. Hey, I'm so perplexed over you. You just get on my last nerve, perplexity, because you're just another version of chat GPT. Just another part of me. Woo! Y'all not going to be able to get that. We're sending out. What? And this is our message to you. Y'all ain't going to be able to get that song out of your head. Hey, the beat was all right, wasn't it? Okay, the assertion of the standard promissory note know, the non-transfer, uh, unless it is explicitly states that the transfer is not entirely accurate. Promissory notes by their nature, can either be negotiable or non-negotiable. There you go. See, it understood what I was saying. Okay, now hold on. Negotiable or non-negotiable promissory note. These notes are transferable, the negotiable promissory notes, and can be endorsed by another party. They must meet the criteria and be considered negotiable, such as containing an unconditional promise to pay a specific amount of money, be payable on demand, or at a definite time, and be payable to order or to bearer. See, that's the language. It has to have that transferability language, and the transferability language must also include that it can be cashed. It can be negotiated. It's called a negotiable instrument, negotiable promissory note. That means that it's not a promissory note. Okay? It knows what I'm saying, but it tried to change it up. Uniform Commercial Code in the United States governs negotiable instruments, including promissory notes. Governs negotiable instruments. It governs promissory notes. It provides the, tra the framework of transferability. Non-negotiable promissory note. Now, hold on now. Your promissory note is not non-negotiable. And if it's not a non-negotiable promissory note, it cannot be used as evidence of an outstanding debt because it's a, pay attention, financial instrument. Watch this. These notes do not meet the criteria of negotiability and are not transferable unless explicitly stated. They are more akin to a simple contract between the original parties involved. A non-negotiable note uh, might include specific language that restricts transferability or simply lacks the features that makes the instrument negotiable, a negotiable instrument. Promissory notes are not negotiable instruments. Please understand that they are non-negotiable. They are putting on the record, people, a negotiable instrument. And you guys don't know the difference. Stop calling it a promissory note. Stop calling it a negotiable instrument. Call it what it is, a draft. Okay? Transferability language. If a promissory note to be transferable, typically it needs to include language that allows for endorsement. Your promissory note allows for endorsement. Pay attention. Without such language, the note is considered non-negotiable and cannot be transferred to another party. So you prove your promissory note was a negotiable instrument, a financial instrument, a draft, by just showing evidence of the assignment and transferability of the note. Ta-da, people. We created a petition for you moment ago for those of you who have been foreclosed on to go back in court challenge it introduce new evidence that's your new evidence the court should have known this and they didn't you haven't brought it up before you're bringing it up now you can introduce new evidence get a case completely reopened get chat gpt to help you i've already done a temporary motion for you but that's what we're doing here so i would take the information i would try to apply it as best you can
All right. Now look. Hey, 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 hey. Hold on now. Some people have paid for consults for me to walk them through this whole process. You guys just had a mini consult with me telling you how to do it yourself. And look, you got a ton of different motions right here. And I told you how to do it to where you don't have to worry about case law. Everybody's been asking me about the coast law. There's no such thing as case law. Okay? There's no such thing as coast law. Not when it comes to the law. So how do you get around the coast law? I mean, case law, whatever that junk is. You simply ask it for the principles of law. Here, the defendant must adhere to the equitable principles and legal requirements set forth by federal law. Ta-da! But guess what, ladies and gentlemen? It didn't even put the maxim. Equity must do equity. It put the maxim. That's what you want. Why do you want maxims? Because the courts can't deviate from maxims. It doesn't matter what the case law says. They can't deviate from maxims. They must follow principles of law. I know, I know, I know. Everybody's going to start talking about principles of law and all this. But look, don't listen to everybody else. Don't listen to me. Understand what's given to you here. Now you can start doing things for yourself. You can go back and listen to this twice. And you can start handling your business. Stop being afraid of them. You must understand what their Achilles heel is. I just gave it to you. Where you can do it yourself. You don't have to use case law. That's where everybody gets hung up on. It's stupid. I got to find a case law that matches this and matches that. <laughs> I don't know. Please stop. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I really am extremely, extremely, extremely tired. Um, so I'm going to finish this. Yeah, I've been been burning oils and midnights and all of that stuff, and I don't know what to do. But I got to go. Bye-bye.